Hi everyone and thanks for stopping by my channel. If you're new, please subscribe and after the video is over, I would love for you to give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. Today we're going to be discussing how to do reverse glass painting on clear glass Dollar Tree plates. We'll be using stamps, stencils, and decoupage. So let's get started. We're going to begin our reverse glass painting, but first we have to make sure that our colors are going to work with whatever we've printed out. So what I've done is I've taken light buttermilk and milk chocolate and dark chocolate. The first thing I did was mix these two colors together and I came up with this color, which was approximately the lighter color, but I just added a little bit more of dark chocolate into it to mix um, this color. And then I added various um, increments of more dark chocolate to make these three different values. And um, this is what I'm going to be using um, to equal the colors that I originally used on the tea box. So when you're reverse reversing what you do on glass, the first thing you want to do is make sure that your glass is nice and clean. And so what I did last on the tea box is what I will do first. We're also going to come in and learn how to decoupage an image onto here using the dishwasher safe decoupage. So everything will match really well. So what I want to make sure is, I want to make sure that there's absolutely no particles, no dirt, and I just got some paint on here. So what I do is I have, this is rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to just clean this up really quick and make sure that I have absolutely nothing on here. So I'm going to begin with um, the color that I originally started with, um, it, with the sponging, and that will be my lightest color. So again, I've loaded this into my sponge so that I can see how the sponge looks naturally. It's not globbed with paint. And again, this is our glossy enamels. So um, these are made for um, glass. So I'm going to come in and very lightly touch down. And I'm creating a little bit of the texture. And I'm hoping that you can see this okay because it's all so shiny. So it's just barely, I'm barely putting in any texture at all because this is our first step. Now at the same time, I'm, I'm, I've got a little luncheon um, plate here. I'm going to do the same exact thing while I still have this paint on here. So you do not need a lot of this paint. You want to keep it out of the center. And I'm wearing gloves so that the oils from my hand does not get onto the glass. Now I have uh, an old brush and I'm going to just open this up by pulling it really hard. It's easy to do with the rubber gloves on. And you can see this makes a great scruffy brush. So I'm going to go in my darker color first because that's going to show through and I'm going to go right around and I'm touching ever so lightly I'm also going to come around the outside edge and you can see I've only loaded this once and so um, a little bit goes a long way. Okay, then I'm going to come in with that medium brown. And I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to go over this, and I'll start back where I originally started. Because then what's going to happen is you're going to see the dark just a little bit and then the lighter color on the outside. So 
So you have to think in reverse of how you normally would um, be painting. So whatever goes in last goes first when you're doing a reverse glass painting. And I want to make sure that I get a nice coverage over here because this way you won't be able to see the edge of what I'm going to be de decoupaging. I'm just painting the outside area. And this glass plate I got from Dollar Tree. Both of the glass plates were from Dollar Tree. So you can just make these really inexpensive table decorations and you can change them out without breaking your bank. That went a little bit too far, so I will just use my finger to fix that a little bit. And then I'm going to quickly do the outer edge just like I did before. And I will speed up the film since we were doing the same thing. going to stamp on the side but I'm going to hold this in my hand because to keep it on a handle on a hard acrylic handle it um, will be a little bit awkward and I'm only going to load half at a time. I also did not add water to my sponge because I do not want to get any water and dilute it into the paint uh, because the paint um, has a special medium that you use with it. So I'm only going to load half of the stamp and I have to work very quickly so I'm going to hold this like on an angle and just take and press it and I'm just trying to um, give a little bit of the images I'm just trying to impress some of the images that were on the original design. So it's not going to look perfect, and that's fine. We don't care if it looks perfect. So I do different parts of the stamp. You know, I'll do a little bit of scrolls. And we're just creating texture. I think this is going to turn out really sharp looking. So there's a trick to working on glass with a stamp because it's going to wiggle around. But in this case, even if it smears a little bit, that's fine with me because I'm not trying to get perfect images. So I don't know if you can see already some of the really neat texture that I have going on here. Um, and it will be more obvious as soon as we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, my small plate and I'll be back. Okay, so now um, we need to add the texture, um, the damask te texture that was on here, but I felt as though using a, the stencil, because the stencil is hard, just like the acrylic and you can't bend it. So I found this little damask stamp and we're going to use that instead. The larger plate is going to have the blue coloring and the smaller plate is going to have more of the white coloring. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to um, I'm going to um, use off-white to stamp here and then I'll go over it with the blue. And then to the small plate I will come in and I'll stamp with the turquoise color. Okay, 
And again, I'm going to just very lightly put it down and press. Lift up. Try to get two with each impression. That's good. I think I'm going to just load half. And that I can see there's bubbles on there, so that's way too much paint, and it will slide around. So you have to make sure that your um, sponge looks just like a stamp pad, and that it's not uh, it does not have too much paint on it. I'll put my hand underneath there. You can see how it's starting to turn out. It's starting to look like very vintage texture. And it's almost lacy. I really like it. And so now I have Indian turquoise. Um, and I know that's not the same color. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of that beige color and um, tone it down really quickly. So let me show you my palette over here. I just picked up a little bit of this beige color. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm comparing it to the um, picture, and it needs just to be toned down just a little bit more. And I think what I want to do is mix a whole bunch of, because this is going to be my background color on the plate. And I'm also going to take just a little bit of my off-white color because it was just a little bit lighter blue. And so you see that's just, if I can, can compare it, this was a very bright blue and so now this has been toned down so we're going to be using that and I'll just mix that right into it. If you don't want to mix colors, that's fine with me. You can have it nice and bright. I'm just trying to show you um, what I'm doing. Okay, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just load half of this again. So now with this, I'm not going to try to create too much texture. We just want to give little indications because this is going to be mostly off-white. I just want a little bit. And you can see I'm not worrying about having a perfect image. Um, just kind of like the way I stenciled it where I just um, had a little bit of uh, paint on my brush and I uh, with the tea box. That's what we're going for here. Okay, and I can see just a little bit of the blue coming through, and it's creating some more texture. I really like that. I have a dry brush, and I'm loading this into the blue now. And I'm going to simply stroke back and forth, coming to about the middle of the texture area. And so you won't be able to see it there, but look what you see on the other side. See how it looks very similar to my, um, to my tea box. And I'm probably going to put one coat on, allow it to dry, and then I'll put a second coat on. Because I want to make sure that this is nice and opaque. But because my brush is dry, the paint is not being diluted. And that also helps too. You don't want to overload your brush and have streaking. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to periodically look and make sure that I don't have any physical texture. I'm going to put this to the side and then I'm going to do the small plate. Now I have a little bit of paint that was on my hands that got on here. So we need to make sure that all of that is off. So what I do is I spray my paper towel with some rubbing alcohol and that will take that right off. And I can also see I have some over here. And the problem is, is I've got paint on my gloves, but I don't want to take my gloves off yet. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to put the off-white on here. And this is the same off-white color that we were using. And again, my brush is dry. So you can see when I flip it over how it has um, all the texture showing throughout the blues and everything. Okay, now both of these plates need to cure for four days according to the instructions on the bottle. And then it has to be baked at 325 for a half an hour. So I'm going to follow those exact instructions and I'm not going to try to rush anything. So I'll be back in a bit. Well, four days have passed and I allowed the paint to cure as per the instructions on the bottles. And then I baked them for a half an hour at 325. And this seems to be on there fairly well, and so now it's time to come in and decoupage. And I can say that I've already decoupaged um, the small plate because I wanted to see what would happen, and I put in a, an extra flower, um, which I didn't have with this design, um, just because of the way I printed it out. Uh, and the flower was a real thick paper. It was um, a 60-pound weight, and that decoupaged really easily. I wanted to find out what would happen if I decoupage with regular or just copy paper. Now I do have a laser printer um, and that's really important so if you don't have a laser printer you're going to have to go to like Office Max or someplace like that and have them run a whatever you are going to be decoupaging through. Um, but I will say that I got a few bubbles and the paper did start becoming a little bit transparent. And I think it's just because I have very cheap paper. So, um, I'm going to use the same paper on here and we'll see what we get. Hopefully it's going to be fine. Uh, but I will anticipate some, paper, some puckers. But if you leave it alone, it will be fine. Because what I'm finding is as it dries, there a, was a few bumps right over here. And I just used my finger and worked those out. But if I come in in the very beginning, you can fold it over and that's what I did here and I got a crease so um, the key is to be patient so I've already cleaned this with rubbing alcohol and that's really important and I'm not sure if I just picked up a dust particle as yes, I did and so now again I want the dishwasher safe decoupage by Americana and I'm going to come in and I have a dry brush and I'm going to use a very liberal amount 
of uh, this di uh, dishwasher safe decoupage. Now some of you say, well, you know, I use other brands or I just use glue. In this case, I really want to be able to keep my um, plate permanent and I want to be able to wash it. I don't know if I will actually wash it in the dishwasher, but I will definitely soak it in water to make sure that it's, it gets nice and clean. Okay, so I have a nice coat there. And then I'm going to turn this over and I'll start at the bottom. And I'm going to just work it on. And so then I'm going to take my brayer and brayer over it. And what's really interesting is I didn't really get very many puckers in here. So I'm thinking that the reason I had puckers on the other one is I had two layers. I had first the flour that I put in and then and now here I have a little bit of a bubble. So what I want to do is use my finger to work this out. And I'm not worried about this outside edge lifting up. What I'll do now is I'm going to let this dry naturally. If you ever come in and um, automatically come in while this is still wet, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of puckers. At least that's how my experience has been. So we're going to let this dry naturally, and then I'm going to come back and put two coats on it before we see the big reveal. So, I'll be back. Okay, now I'm going to come in and um, put the coat on the back. And I'll just do that in the same manner. And again, being patient is really important with decoupaging. Um, in the beginning, I tried rushing it, and I ruined a lot of pieces, and I don't want to have that happen, especially since I've waited so long for the paint to dry. Now, I'm going to put a lot of coats on here, and right now I'm going around the outside edges and going underneath anything that's not sealed because we don't want to have any water seeping up. So I want to make sure I come in and really seal these edges. And I will probably put in, either the instructions tell you to put in two coats. I'm probably going to put in twice that amount, probably four. So when I'm done, I will show you the big reveal. Now, one of the things I'm going to do is to make some um, gift boxes and also some napkin rings using toilet paper rolls. And I did this in another, um, in another video, and I will have a link to that video below so you can see exactly how I did everything. But what is a little bit different here is I want to stamp on the toilet paper roll. And that's kind of hard to do, so I want to show you how I approach it. I'm working with Americana Regular Acrylics now. Um, I only use the glass paints on the glass itself. So I base coated this with light buttermilk. And so I'm going to approach this in the same way. So what I'm going to do is come over here, and then I'm going to just roll the um, impression onto it. And so I'll load it again. And I try to start wherever I stopped. And so that's how I get the impression all the way around. And then I'll um, come and do the sides, but I wanted to show you this. Um, and then I'll show you what I do with them in a little bit. Now in the same manner I'm going to load the stamp with some fawn. And because this is a bigger stamp, we can roll the whole roll on here. And I'm just pressing and then trying to get my hands out of the way. So I was able to get the entire toilet paper roll with that. And I impressed the blue one in the same manner. Now 
Now what I've decided to do is I'm going to just have some pretty blue or white or um, maybe even some um, peach type color flowers. So I wanted to continue my theme and put create some um, plant picks with the little birds. So I'm using bamboo skewers and this is going to um, be the uh, base for the picks. I just put some glue on it and I'm actually going to put the um, pick fairly far down so that it's as high as possible. And then I'm going to just press these together. And I'm going to just make sure I hold it close to the pick for a few minutes. Now I have this cute little pick that I can put into my flowers. So I showed you how I had rolled the toilet paper rolls. Well, these are called um, pillow boxes, and so I put the lace around them and then just glued the cutout of the, the um, images that I had already painted. What I did is I printed them out onto um, 60 pound stack. And so what you can do then is you can put gifts in here, candies or little special treats for your um, friends as they come over for tea. I, and I also created a white one with the bird. And then with the toilet, also using the toilet paper um, rolls, I um, just simply glued the images on here. Now, for these, if you want to keep your napkin rings at, um, at permanent, what I would do is I'd come in with two-part resin and coat them so they're nice and hard. Um, because they, then it will almost be like they're made out of a hard plastic and they will last for a long time. So I always think about what you can do and what kind of things you would need for whatever event that you're planning, whether it's going to be something for your church or you're just having the ladies over for tea or if it's a, going to be a chapter meeting. You may need invitations and you can easily make invitations with the same stamps and um, paints that I use. And you can make little place cards or place settings. Um, you could paint placemats or even table runners using the stamps and the, and the paints also. So use your imagination. I just showed you a few ways to create table decor. The whole idea is to use paper and Dollar Tree items so that you can keep your costs down. And I think that what we have is quite lovely. Thanks so much for spending time with me today, and I really hope you enjoyed this video. I would love if you'd share it with your friends by clicking on the share button. And also, if you are a subscriber, please click on the bell so that you will be notified when I upload new videos. I hope that this has been an inspiration to you to create beautiful table decor just from using Dollar Tree plates and paper. I'll see you next time when I'll be doing a fun canvas painting. So until then, may painting always bring you joy.